Hi everybody, I'm Jen Cassetta. Still talking about confidence, but today I wanted to specifically talk about setting boundaries. <clears throat> setting boundaries is a practice that's really, really healthy for us. And over time, the more we set our boundaries in a powerful way, um, both physically and emotionally, over time that helps us build confidence. Why? Because setting boundaries helps us preserve our power. What is our power, right? How do we define our power? Really, that's up to you. Um, I like to define my power as my positivity. It's what makes me me. It's what helps me go after my dreams. Um, and a lot of times I have to set boundaries um, in all different ways, in all different aspects of my life. And I'm sure you do too. So we can set boundaries around our time, our energy, our resources, our bodies, um, and especially with interactions with people. When I teach self-defense, I teach setting boundaries in a physical sense, right? In a physical realm. Meaning, um, if you were to put out your hands and make a circle, that's your personal space, your personal physical space. If someone that you didn't want was to invade that space, that's a perfect time that you would have to set a boundary. Now, uh, when I teach physical self-defense, I give you two options. If someone's in your personal space or invades that boundary, whether they know it or not, um, we have two things that we can do. First, we can create distance from that person, place, or thing. Here, let's just talk about people so it's easy. We can create distance from that person. So, uh, for example, if you're walking out on the street late at night, you would try and cross the street or go into a nearest store or run away, right? Create distance from that person. Or uh, maybe you're physically not able to and that's okay. Or you just want to verbally confront that person. Verbally confronting that person is telling that person what your boundary is. Hey, back off. Get out of my space. Do not touch me. Right? Those are all setting boundaries very in a very powerful way. Um, and I teach people how to do that with body language, with tone, with different vocabulary that we use. But today I really want to focus on emotional boundaries um, because this really applies to us in every single day of our life, um, in every interaction that we have with people. Because again, we want to preserve your power, whatever that means to you. For me, it's my positivity. So I want to preserve my energy, my resources, because I have a lot of great epic things that I need to do in my life, right? I wanna spend my energy where I wanna spend it and not on the things that do not serve me. And definitely not in situations or with people that are trying to take advantage of me, um, trying to speak down to me, poorly at me. Um, anybody, obviously there's low levels of people that can drag our energy away from us, right? Like the ones I just mentioned. And then obviously that can build up towards um, people that have, have taken advantage of you or abused you either emotionally or physically in any sort of way. Now, let's just talk about um, an average day at the office or in any interaction that you may have um, in, your, in your day with people, right? Um, how do we set boundaries? Again, uh, this can be with somebody who's talking down at you. This can be somebody that's taking advantage of your time, of your kindness, of your resources, and then obviously taking advantage of you in more extreme ways. So just like in the physical realm, in the emotional realm, there are also two choices and they're the same. One, we can create distance from that person, place, or thing. How do you create distance from somebody? Now, if this person is um, close to you, if they're related to you, if you're re in a relationship with them, it might not be easy to create distance from them or they're your boss or you work with them right next to, you know, cubicle to cubicle or whatever. It might not be so easy to create distance physically, but can you make yourself less accessible to them? So examples can be, do you have to answer their email right away? Do you have to answer their text right away or pick up the phone every time they call? No, maybe you can start to create distance that way. Be less accessible. 
Um, don't feel obligated that you have to invite this person everywhere or do all the things that you usually do for this person. Okay, that's one example. And that's creating distance. The other, that second way is still um, verbally confronting them or verbally letting them know what your boundaries are. And here the possibilities are limitless. Um, again, every situation is gonna be different, whether it's personal or professional, um, and everybody has a different comfort level with confrontation. And that's okay too. You just need to know where you sit on that scale. So let's, um, let's do some examples, right? Someone in the office you feel like is speaking to you in a manner that does not feel good. You feel like, hmm, after you leave that interaction, like, that doesn't sit right with me. I feel like this person is trying to take advantage of me. They're taking advantage of my kindness, my time. Um, they're overworking me. It's not fair. Whatever that is, um, you can, you have lots of different ways to set your boundaries. You can use things like um, just telling the person how it makes you feel, right? The way you speak to me and give an example makes me feel like X. And then you can ask another question. You can bounce a question off them. This is one of my favorite techniques is asking people questions. Um, do you think that's appropriate? Let's give another example. Another example would be when someone physically touches you, right? If someone puts your, their hand on your knee or your shoulder for a little too long, or that hug that just goes that extra few seconds, you know the one, the creepy one. This is a perfect time to use a question if you're not comfortable with confrontation. Because there's always a very straight out like, do not touch me again, don't hug me like that, I don't like the way that makes me feel. Or you can say something like, do you think it's appropriate to hug me that way? And then wait for an answer, right? When you hold somebody's gaze after a question, you're holding them accountable essentially to answer you. So if they try to, you know, um, look away or change the subject, just go right back to the question and ask it again. Do you think it was a, do you think it's appropriate for you to touch me like that? Good. So we got that straight. Now, um, so you can use questioning, you can say how it makes you feel, um, and you can also be just verbally blunt about things too. Again, that takes a different level of uh, comfort in, in confrontation. To say something like, do not touch me, do not speak to me like that ever again. Um, and that's all okay because it's setting boundaries. A lot of times, and I hate to even say this, people that overstep our boundaries sometimes don't even realize they're doing it. So it's really important um, for you and for them to tell them what your boundaries are. I hope that helps in any area of your life, whether it's personal or professional, um, where you can start to examine a situation that doesn't make you feel good and ask yourself, you know, what are the feelings I'm having right now? And is that, you know, am I making this up in my head? No, probably not. It's probably that somebody has overstepped their boundaries um, and treating you in a way that doesn't make you feel okay. And it is perfectly fine to set your boundaries, either by creating distance and being less accessible or by verbally confronting someone and letting them know that you're not okay with that. And guess what? Over time, the more you do this, basically it's sticking up for yourself, right? Over time, you will feel more confident. Your confidence will just start to soar because it's like, hey, I'm taking care of myself and I'm not gonna let somebody constantly just chip away, chip away, chip away at my boundaries. You got this. Um, if you want more confidence training, I have a free course called the She Warrior Confidence Course. It's all online. Uh, if you go to my website at jennifercassetta.com, just fill in your name and your best email. You'll get instant access to just a five-day course um, where you invest 15 to 20 minutes a day and get tools for the rest of your life to help you stick up for yourself, protect your positivity, and preserve your power because you are powerful. All right, I'll see you in there.